Hey guys, Nick here from 4PlayerNetwork.com and I'm here with Brad. That's me. And we're standing in front of the Bethesda booth at E3 2014. We're going to talk to you a little bit about The Evil Within. The Evil Within. Which, if you may remember, at PAX East we talked about and we were, we were really bummed about because what they showed was very disappointing. It wasn't really at all what they promised. It didn't feel like a horror game. Well, I'm here to tell you, we played it for about an hour yesterday. And it was really fucking good. Pretty fucking good, man. So. One thing I think that stands out to me about this game almost immediately is the pacing and just the tone of the game feels totally different. If someone were to pack. ask me if, if if The Evil Within was a survival horror game, after what we played yesterday, I would say hell yes. Yes, so every, all the staples of a traditional survival horror game are intact here. Uh, minim, like Very minimal amount of ammo I, is available. Yeah. I was running out of bullets A few constantly. bullets at any given time. I, I had like... You know, eight pistol rounds and like two sh shotgun shells. And during the podcast that we recorded last night, we kind of we were discussing it, and this is kind of what made it stand out for me. Is this feels like a love child between uh, Resident Evil Four, because in terms of its control scheme, uh, its enemies, kind of thing, that kind of stuff, and the Resident Evil remake, which yes. had a, a or beautiful just old school Resident Evil or where, old school Resident Evil. But I mean, in the demo, we were in a mansion. It was dark. It was creepy. There was like freaky sounds and stuff, and you just explored. It didn't tell you where to go. You were searching rooms. You eventually kind of stumbled into a puzzle and kind of figured out how that worked, and then you were exploring to find out, you know, the other parts of that puzzle that would get you through this door that you had to get through. It, it, it was very old school Resident Evil, but the combat was Resident Evil 4. This is kind of what I was hoping The Evil Within was when it was first announced, and I was happy that it was actually, it, it, it to me, it delivered. Honestly, I'm glad you got to experience this first Instead of like, because PAX, the PAX East demo really soured my opinion of the game. Yeah. And to have this come back and com almost completely redeem it was really awesome. I'm a little worried about the consistency of the experience throughout because that game, sure. that demo from PAX East is still going to be there. But but based on what we played, I feel like it plays good. You know, it, there it seems feels to, real nice. Like the inventory system is smart where it kind of slows down time uh, when you're switching weapons. I like, I like uh, that it still has some of the crazier weapons that the Resident Evil series has always had. I was shooting like, Frost bolts that was freezing zombies and shit. But at the same time, there's some more survival mechanics. Like I like how, I like how when you're really hurt, you really, really do slow down and kind of drag yourself around the room, and it remains really tense as slow-moving zombies kind of shamble towards you as you're trying to figure out, you know, what you're gonna do in that situation. I also like how there's a there's like a very limited sprint. I, I think in old Resident Evil, you can kind of just sprint forever. Yeah, but in, in this, like, it was a very short amount of time before he Especially stopped Resident Evil 4, and, like, you could sprint forever in that. Yeah, so so that limited sprint really added to that to that that kind of feeling of desperation in a in a you know. A really and resource management is it, it, it kind of becomes a, a game of resource management, as any good survival horror should. Two things that really stood out to me too. Um, one, there's like a ne nemesis-like creature. Uh, in this in this demo we played, it was like a ghost. It's like ring ghost looking girl that would like appear at random points throughout the demo wait it wasn't a ring ghost girl i don't know it was a ghost the ghost was, had a hood it, it was, was like an assassin's creed ghost it was an assassin's creed but ghost. the point was it was like a one hit kill and when it showed up randomly you just had to run and i had a really cool moment when i was fighting when i was fighting a dude and i headshotted a guy and, and he burst into that one hit kill ghost and i just had to run in the middle of a combat encounter it was it, it was it, it reminded me of kind of the Las Plagas and Resident Evil 4, which you didn't know if you headshotted a guy, was a big horrible thing going to come out. And at the same time, kind of like God Hand, which is another Shinji Mikami game, where an enemy you killed would randomly turn into like a ghost that was like way harder to beat. So it's a mechanic we've seen before, and I'm glad that it's in this game. Definitely. Um, also, something they borrowed from Resident Evil Remake. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there of that game, but if you if you kill an enemy, if you don't destroy their head. There's always a chance, or not really a chance. Eventually, they will get back up and they will come after you. So you so have to burn them. You have like to the burn their bodies, heads. and you have limited, like burn materials as well. And there were times where I would go into a room and there would already be a body on the floor, and I'm like, should I burn that or not? Is that thing dead? It didn't pop up. It wasn't like a scare. It was just a decision I had to make. I have limited resources. Is it worth it? And and I, I like the feeling of kind of getting in combat encounters and just not having the resources to really be able to handle it and just kind of leaving a room that has a zombie in it because I just, I, I don't have anything to do except, you know, maybe go fight it with a knife. But when you're low on health, it's not really a smart option. That That's very old school Resident Evil and I like that. Yeah, so overall, the game kind of came, had a major comeback here at, at E3. 
um, delivered a really awesome, satisfying demo. We got to play it for like 45 minutes to an hour, uh, which was really cool. And uh, I mean, I didn't even I didn't even finish the demo. Chris Davis finished the demo. Brad didn't finish the demo either. But I mean, we had a really good, nice chunk of time playing. I kept it. dying. It was hard. The game is the game is not necessarily easy. Um, so. I, the game is definitely on the right path. I'm, we're, I'm back in. I'm back in support of the Evil Within. I'm really excited for it, uh, and we're probably gonna try and get our hands on it again at at, uh, at QuakeCon in July, but it comes out in October, uh, yeah. and uh, so that kind of sucks. But I would urge everyone to keep an eye on it. It looks awesome. But is there anything else you want to say about the Evil Within before we wrap it up? Um, uh, not much. I just hope that GameFly will let me have 12 games out at a time for October. Good luck with that. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Keep your eyes locked here at 4PlayerNetwork.com for more impressions, podcasts, all that good stuff. We will catch you later.